So Roger's going to share with us about these geniuses that you have been uh, that you've been taking, so that you'll understand what's the value of knowing your genius and how you can use this knowledge to begin putting your passions to work. Okay. So how does the four geniuses link with the Wealth Lighthouse? If you know what your genius is, what's the relationship between your genius, the other geniuses, with the flow of time, and with the different levels within the lighthouse as well? Let's start by actually looking at the lighthouse itself and say, well, what is this lighthouse? And many different people through history have looked at humanity, looked at the way we, we operate, the way we think, um, and as a result of that, come up with many interesting conclusions. I'll give you an example, Carl Jung. Carl Jung is really the grandfather of psychometric testing. Uh, and he came up, he was the first to actually translate the I Ching, which is a book of changes from China. And that happened uh, in around 1920 or so. Uh, and in 1921, he came up with his book, uh, which was a book called Psycho uh, Psychological Types, which is all about uh, different people and how we're different from each other. That's where we get words like introvert and extrovert and you know, uh, intuitive and sensory. So while that is something that's been very helpful for a lot of the psychometric tests today, what he was more interested in after that was something called the collective unconscious. That was what he called it. And it was this thing where he was like, there's a voice inside our heads which are speaking to us, and sometimes we hear the same voice in with advising the same things in a different way, and that's how groups end up doing the same thing at the same time. And uh, it's a little bit like if you were a pilot on a plane, and you're flying along, and you hear this voice, and the voice in the cockpit is telling you to go higher or lower or this way or that way, and you meet other pilots and go, I hear this voice in my cockpit, and I'm looking everywhere to find the voice. Can't find the little man. And the uh, pilots are like, no, we get that voice too, and you won't find him because he's not in the cockpit. He's actually in the control tower. He's in the control tower, and we get the same voice as you do. Well, depending on whether that person's at looking at the you know, south window or the north window. That's what Carl Jung talks about when he's talking about collective unconscious. It's this notion that we're actually tuning into something which is giving us that little voice in our head. And whether or not you subscribe to that or not, let's just take that as a thought. And let's say, well, if there was this like a, like collective unconscious, this, this place where we're actually able to actually get direction and get a, a way for us to better move forward, and if this thing had a total of three prisms, which is where we get our nine levels from, and it had four, you, know, you can see the cross section here looks something like this. It's, it's got a square where you might be looking at the north side or the south side or the east side or the west side. This is where we get our four different geniuses. We're actually looking at different sides and we're actually using different parts of our brain to be able to actually get into our flow in the first place. And what, what do we mean by flow? Let's have a look at flow the way that a uh, river might flow, and you'll find that when a river flows, it always flows because there's a height differential, right? So it's high and low. And it also will not only, like, you know, flow, if, if you have a, double the height differential, you have double the speed. So you have something that controls speed, which is that differential. Uh, and then you also have something which will control volume, which is the width here, right? So this is volume. And within all of wealth, there's an equation. I, I like to say wealth is not how much money you have, it's what you're left with if you lose your money. It's the opposite. Uh, it's the river, it's not the water. Now, the water will keep on moving in the river, but the river stays where, where it is. So you say, well, there's an equation here, which is an equation that links to the four geniuses together within flow and within wealth. And that equation is that wealth equals value. So value, value is what creates the speed here. Just like height differential will allow money to flow, uh, water to flow, value differential will allow money to flow. So for example, if I wanted to sell my shoes, and I went to someone and said, I'll sell my shoes to you for $100. And let's say they said, I'll buy the shoes. Well, that means they clearly value the shoes more than me, because I'd rather have the 100, they'd rather have the shoes. They get the shoes, I get the money. So all money flows as a result of value exchange. And if I wanted to double the money I was going to make, I might basically kind of find a, find a way to get shoes worth $200. Then I can double at the same moment the same transaction. Or I might say, I'll just get two pairs of shoes, $100 each. I'll still make $200. That's where leverage comes in. So leverage is when you actually take a particular kind of value and you either multiply it or magnify it. You actually make more of the same thing. And so when you take these two together, you have wealth equals value times leverage. And while I explain all of this in the book, let me show you graphically what that looks like when you put it into the geniuses. There are two opposites of value. So we have our dynamo geniuses. Our dynamo geniuses are the ones up here Dynamo are the ones who have their head in the clouds. They're great at starting things. It's like the spring season. And Dynamo geniuses have a way that they create value 
is through something called innovation. Innovation is creating something new. Someone like a Steve Jobs or a Bill Gates, these are people that created new things that weren't there before, and as a result of that, they ended up creating value and money flowed because of the products or the services or the brand that they built. Opposite down here to Tempo, uh, sorry, to Dynamo is Tempo Genius. A Tempo Genius is not someone who has head in the clouds, it's someone who has their ear to the ground. They're the actual opposite. They, de they, don't, uh, you know, they don't so much look out and have perspective, which is depth of vision. It's more like they have perception, which is breadth of vision. And as a result of that, they don't create their value through innovation. They create it through something called timing. Someone like Warren Buffett, someone like Donald Trump through the deals he does. That's all through the timing side. And so the two of them are complementary to each other. Generally, a lot of people up here who are dynamos, they're not so good at timing. Uh, they might think they are, but at the end of the day, they, they make the money in their business and they lose it on the stock market. The opposite down here, tempo geniuses are not the best at going out and starting up new ideas, but they're really good at being able to actually serve, trade, and sense what's happening around them. Uh, and then you also, as well as having two opposites to how you create value, uh, you also have two opposites to how you leverage that value. So, for example, we'll have over here our steel genius, which is the winter energy. And steel geniuses are very good at doing something called uh, multiply. Multiply is like I mentioned with shoes. It's like you have one, then you have many. And this is all about having the right systems in place. People who have franchises or people who create a system like an online system, you know, they'll be really good at this because they're very good at data. But that's the opposite of someone over here who is called a blaze genius who's really good at not multiplying, which is like making things simple and making money, they actually like to make things complicated, like someone like an Oprah Winfrey, for example, or someone who has a very unique style in leadership like Jack Welsh. They'll be on this side where they're not answering the question, how can it happen without me? They're actually asking the question, how can it only happen with me? Not by multiply, but by magnify. Magnify is not about saying, how do I make things simple and make many? It's about saying, how do I make only one thing that's so complex, one brand, like an Oprah Winfrey brand, they've got to pay me to show up. A lot of stars, people like you know, Beyonce and others, people will pay a lot of money to go see them on stage because they're unique in what they do, as opposed to trying to go out there and multiply. What's really interesting about this is this all links to something called our action dynamic and something called our thinking dynamic. Our thinking dynamic is how we are either thinking with our head in the clouds, which is here, is, is our, our frontal lobe, it's the part that's all about innovation, which is this here called our intuitive thinking. Uh, and that's the opposite of what happens here, which is our temporal lobe, which is why we say tempo, which is basically all about our senses, which is sensory thinking. Like I said, one is head in the clouds, one is ear to the ground. Similarly, we have action dynamic, because everything is about thought to action, dreams to reality, where on this side, we have introvert as an action dynamic, and on this side, we have extrovert as an action dynamic. And so these all link if you were in the Chinese system, you're talking about yin and yang. They link in such a way that they're like polarities, like plus and minus, north and south. And so as a result of having that on each side, you, each of us have a very, very different way of doing things. And where someone on this side will say, the best thing to do is go out, take risks, be creative. Someone on this side says, no, don't. You know, Warren Buffett wouldn't say go creative. They'd say, you know, analyze things a little bit more. You know, get a sense of what's happening around you. you know, do your research first. Right? It was on this side here, it's like it's not all about the people, it's about really making sure the systems are working well. Whereas on this side, it's actually the opposite, which is all about the people. In fact, each of them ask a different question. You'll find that dynamo geniuses have a natural tendency to ask the question, uh, and I'm gonna just put another, just because I'm getting a bit busy up here, I'm gonna put another way of looking at it here. Let me share a little bit more about why this is in a moment. Uh, but let me just take these four here and we're gonna kind of like see them on the link around here, where this one here, which is Dynamo, I'm gonna put here with the question, what? So the question here, which is what, is the question that Dynamos will always ask. What's a new idea? What's a new business? They've always got a long to-do list of more things, more what, 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 what. They're great at doing that. Now that's this one here, and this one has an energy to it, which the Chinese system, is a system that obviously I'm half Chinese, and so I really love the Chinese systems, which go back a long way in history. Uh, the Chinese system here has an element for this, which is called wood energy. This is wood. And wood energy, which is all about spring energy. This is spring, is about a particular way of doing things, which is to grow. You can't help but grow things when you're on this side here. 
So this is all about growing. That then leads to this one here, where a lot of people here are like asking the question, what should I do? I don't know what to do. A lot of people, the biggest problem that Blaze Geniuses have is like, I don't know what's the next step I should be taking. I don't know what the product is I should be coming up with. They don't have to, because what they're really good is, at is a different question, which is the question, who? Uh, give an example, someone like Steve Ballmer, who for a long time ran Microsoft and supported uh, Bill Gates, he was the one that actually came up with all the who. He was the one who actually got all the people together. So here you have who, which is a different energy. The Chinese element for this is the element fire. Let me put this one down. This is here. Fire energy is summer energy. Summer always follows spring. And if you start by asking the question, what? What should we do? That then leads us to who should we have around ourselves as well. And that's what they're great at doing. And that's why a lot of times if they ask the opposite question, which is what do I do or even how do I do it, they struggle. But when you get the right team around you, life gets really easy. So then from there, if you are more of a blaze genius, you'd want to work with someone also who's a tempo genius. Tempo genius isn't someone who's asking the question who the whole time. And who, by the way, is all about being able to glow. Very different type of an energy. Right? It's like you just want to have fun. You want to be able to kind of like make sure that everyone's being truly engaged and everyone's being taken care of. On this side here, this is now going from fire to earth. The wood creates fire, allows fire to, to burn. Fire then settles down into earth. This one here, which is earth energy, is a different question. It's grounded energy now. So this one here is about slowing things down, and it's by asking the question when. Especially if you're in a business, and the business now actually needs a bit of a tempo because too many people are coming in, it's growing too quickly, you need to slow it down a little bit here. This is the when question. It's also the question where. It's about being at the right place, right time. And this one, the earth energy, those who are tempo are really good at that point when in terms of emergency services, uh, the service industry, they just are always watching out. When does someone need support? When does someone need help? Something that on this side here, dynamo geniuses tend to be thinking everything needs to be done yesterday. Right? So a very different sense of time. This one here, earth energy, is obviously autumn because this is the settled energy that comes out when you're in this, um, you're in this zone here. And then that leads to obviously winter here. So this is winter energy, which is steel. Steel genius, you go from fire to earth, earth to metal, and this is the question how. They're great at answering the question how, but if you ask them what's the next thing they should do, they don't always know, because they're not so great at starting with a blank slate. But here, if you get to the how, this becomes about no. This is no. And each of us are focusing on a different thing that we're actually looking at here as well as we're moving forward. Now, by the way, if you take uh, a team even, if you're a te like talking about time for a moment, uh, this is the first real assessment tool that links to the flow of time. And we all know today, time, the changes in time are just getting bigger and bigger. The waves of change that are upon us, that people are losing jobs, people are having a tough time even keeping up with their business. But by actually understanding how time flows, just like a surfer understanding how the waves flow, allows you to be able to surf. You know, it's not about just sinking and swimming, it's about surfing that wave. So for example, even starting a new team up, uh, there are these four steps where it always starts with form and then, and then storm and then norm and then perform. And you're going to find that a different person is best at leading each side here or the different energies required to go from all of this kind of like getting it, all the pieces together to basically getting the brainstorming, the storming happening, getting to everything like normalizing, getting to now the true performance coming out that you're going to find at each point a different question is required, a different leadership is required at that point too. Uh, same happens in terms of your industry. Right now, your industry is in one of the four seasons. Uh, your business is in one of the four seasons. And so by understanding where you are, you can see why your winning formula can very quickly become a losing formula as well. And how by following your natural flow, you'll have someone who's the opposite and someone complementary who can actually be working with you. Uh, and that's a large part of what we do with Ingenious U. Now, by the way, you notice that here there's five elements here. And this is the alchemical cycle. And the reason that there's a fifth one is this is the one that connects all of them together. Think about this a little bit, like the fact that while we might have these squares that go up, and so there'll be a total of nine squares that we'll see as we go up here, there's actually within the center a spiral staircase that goes up. And think of this being the spiral staircase where between each floor there's kind of like a step up that you're taking, and that's this fifth element here. This fifth element here is Wood going to fire to earth to metal, and this one here, which in Chinese is water, 
Of course, to even have the water in the first place, to have the wood, you need to have water to turn it into wood. So this water here is the biggest question of all, which is the question why. And the question why, which is why are you in the job you're in? Or why are you in the business that you're in, the one you're starting? You know, why is it so important to you? Once that becomes a big enough why, other people will come in and help you to create that what. Uh, if you look at each of these a little bit like in a pack of cards, you're going to find that at the top here you have the clouds, right? Which is the which is the clubs. At the base here you have the spades, as in like earth spade. On this side here you have the hearts, which is representative of people and blaze. This side is structure, the diamond. Uh, so here you have the four different elements, which which are represented in the pack of cards. And of course you then have the final card, which actually links all of it together, and that one is here, the joker. The joker trumps everything. And the why this one here, the water energy, trumps all of it. This one here is the one we call spirit, because you cannot get to success without your entrepreneurial spirit. The spirit is timeless, because it just continues and it links all of the rest together. Uh, it's the one that always starts and ends each cycle with the question why, and it's a big entrepreneurial question. It's one thing to keep repeating the same mistake again, but the moment you start asking the question why, you spiral up to the next level, so you're not just continuing again and again. If you think about, if you think about a river, in a river, if you, if you drop a leaf in a river, it will always go into the area's greatest flow. Uh, so you're always going to find that flow creates attraction. And when you get in your flow, you create attraction too. But moving doesn't mean you're in flow, because you might be in one of those things called an eddy current in a river. They just go round and round and round. And you know if you're in an eddy current, because in an eddy current, you come back to exactly the same place, and if you think, well, am I in one of those, or am I actually spiraling up? You know, because if tomorrow you were planning to wake up and have the same day you had today, and it's not your perfect day, it's not your perfect life, that's an eddy current. You're just repeating the same again and again. And the only thing that changes that is when you say, why am I even doing this? When you change that question, it changes everything. That why here is not about the grow or the glow or slow or no, it's about what this is all about, the flow. And these geniuses link into a pattern which allows us to understand all four sides of the lighthouse as well as what is the cycle which leads us up to the point where we become the light. I hope that as we go forward in this journey, you notice that this is not a journey for you to do on your own, but it's to do with others in such a way that you light your light and you help others to light their light so that they, with you, can light the path towards their path as you also follow yours.